Hi guys, I'm back. How are you doing? My name is Ingeborg. This channel's name is A Stitch Too Far. Welcome. It's been a while. I hope you all been well. Uh, I've just been very busy with work and life and everything. So, but now I'm back and this is going to be a long one. So get ready. Get something to drink, get a donut if you have them, um, or a stroopwafel, and let's do this. Uh, so I had a hard time figuring out how long it's been. I should have looked at the last video, that would have been a lot easier, but I didn't. So I'm going to say it was just before I went to Cambridge. And um, that means I have a lot of finishes. I have a lot of new starts that are actually finishes. <laughs> I have to talk to you or I will talk to you about um, my trip to the UK. And I think that's it. We'll see. I'm winging it. I don't, didn't make any notes because I basically didn't know where to start. <laughs> so, um... Um, let's start with the fully finished pieces because those were the, I think, the oldest ones. Um, I think I mentioned previously that I took two of my pieces to a local framer to find some custom frames for them. And they made them for me and they are wonderful. So let's just show them to you. And then I can finally hang them up. <laughs> So, uh, my piece, uh, my coffee saves lives, which is a heartstring samplery. Uh, I'm not sure when I finished this, but it's, uh, it's been finished for quite a while because I think I brought it to New Jersey retreat. So, it's been six months, something like that. But yeah, it's a heartstring samplery. I think it's the Magical Elixir series part one, not sure. And I have it framed finally. And yeah, it's uh, like a copper colored frame. And it's a wood frame, but it's been stained. And yeah, and the, the sides are gray. And then the back is like this. So this is how they provide the back, which is quite, quite decent, I think. It fits really well. I didn't opt for glass because I didn't feel I needed glass. I rarely think it needs glass. Yeah, I'm really happy with this one. And then the other one I'm really, really, really happy with. Because this is my Jane Austen from Modern Folk Embroidery. And I hope this is showing up. Uh, if you can see in the reflection here, there's a little bit of embellishment on the frame. The frame actually... Uh, is a really really dark brown with some greenish tints in it so it really fits really well with the uh, color choice that I made for my uh, piece and again no glass and a nice back so yeah I'm really happy with this one yep definitely the one of the year for me then I think I showed you that I was working on oh, a Little House Needleworks spot of coffee. And I finished that and I, I just do I have a little stash of ready to go frames that I I bought really cheap <coughs> cheaply. Excuse me. And I just framed it like that. I did some color modifications. Don't ask me which ones. I think the blue in the coffee. And uh, I put on the light downstairs. Yeah, just simple frame. And I have another one. <laughs> I know, I know, it's been too long. But yeah, um, this one is another small, it was a hands-on design, a special edition for, she visited 
uh, a needlework store in the north of the Netherlands uh, when I was in Jersey actually so this spring and she made this design especially for the store and if, if you couldn't attend you could still purchase it so I did that was a lot of fun I have a lot of floss left over as well I need to remember that because I need to find a place to store it uh, it came with an extra which I need to remember that I have because it's nice it's a coffee mug which I can use of course I will stitch it um, okay let's leave that till later and here's my finished piece I, I followed the instructions to the letter except that I and it says you can embroider freestyle embroider some lazy daisies onto here but I had this button that I got with uh, an order from Thistles and I figured they were the perfect colors and it wasn't too distracting so yeah I'm really happy with how this turned out yay another finish so yeah we're doing well mm. Then the not fully finished finishes, because I have those two, I know. It looks like uh, I still am using my rotation of working on a bigger piece during the work week, so Monday through Friday, and then picking out a small to work on in the weekends. That is really working out because as you can see, I'm, quite, I'm finishing quite a lot of things. Now this I bought really recently and I just I thought it was perfect for dark October stitching and we don't have Halloween here although people are starting to have it in school parties which I don't understand but yeah I'm just old-fashioned I guess but yeah we don't have that but I couldn't resist this because it's just look at that it's really uh, that's better it's a bit light the light is weird of course here as always but yeah I picked my own colors for some of the bits because it didn't work with the fabric finally uh, this is by the witchy stitchy rabbit bottle of booze um, it didn't give the a recommendation for the fabric so I don't know what the model is stitched on but this is a 32 count haunted by picture this plus which looks like this pretty much a bit darker but yeah love this it is a lot darker than it's showing up it's more it's more like my close to my yeah but yeah really happy with this I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna finish it um, I think I'm gonna look for a bottle <laughs> and stick it on as a label and maybe think of a way to put something in the bottle that looks like a spirit or a ghost if you have any suggestions feel free and that reminds me I have not yet looked at the comments from my last video and I apologize for that it's been really 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 late but I will look at them this weekend and um, I'm gonna have to see if I can reply to everyone or just leave a, a, a like a little heart to know to let you know that I saw your comment um, but yeah, life, guys. It just gets in the way sometimes. Then, oh, this is going a lot faster than I thought it would. But yeah, so our stitch along ink circles tapestry. Um, I finished it. Sorry. So yeah, I'm going to be still looking at all the pictures of everyone who participates. But yeah, I uh, worked with a th 36 count Edinburgh Linen by Picture This Plus in Fog colorway. I used all the recommended threads, which are Gentle Arts, and I have a lot, lot, lot left, as you can see. So it's probably because I used 36 count. And I was hoping that it would fit into uh, one of the frames I already have, and it does, but it really, it will touch all the edges of the frame, and I, I, I don't want that, so I'm going to have to look for 
another frame for that but here is my finish oh my gosh look at that perfect color is perfect it's really true to life yeah i love it i, I can bring it in closer but it's not going to focus i think so i'm going to see but yeah oh my gosh i didn't sign it then now that i come to think of it but yeah i hardly ever sign my pieces oh my god i love this yeah so might have to go to the framer again and see if he can because he recommended the dark frame for the jane austen piece i would never have thought of that and it was a perfect so he really does have to uh, blah, blah, blah. it does look like they have an eye for finding a good frame so i might bring it there and see what they would suggest um another finish <laughs> this one was a really quick one um this is a, a canvas work piece uh, by from nancy's needle if you google that you will find a lot of beautiful pieces i know several other pe uh, people People are, stitch, uh, are stitching pieces of hers. I've seen the, the, the wintry one, I think. Glenn, you stitched that, right? And Caroline, I think, stitched that. But I I saw this in It's becoming a Jersey-themed video. I don't know why. I guess it's because everyone else is in the Midwest retreat or in the Washington uh, stitch fest retreat i don't know maybe but yeah i saw this at needle workers delight is the name of the shop i think in new jersey and I, I fell in love with the colors and now it was turning autumn so i figured yeah i gotta do it and now canvas work i have had some people on instagram uh, ask me about this um to explain a bit about how canvas work, how you do it. Now, if you really, really, really want to get started, I recommend, uh, I would definitely recommend uh, uh, trying out one or two of the uh, canvas work patterns that Arlene at uh, Works by ABC has uh, designed for us. Uh, I will link her shop. Um, because you can also get a square of canvas, uh, like like canvas, it's like a plastic, um, that, so that you don't have to buy a big piece somewhere else. Uh, you can just try it out and see if you like it. But um, I'm going to show you a bit of the chart, because any canvas chart is basically similar to a cross stitch chart as you can see it has a 10 by 10 grid and every line in it represents a thread of the canvas so every inside of a square is a, a hole in the canvas and um, it won't be very clear but um, every line represents a line of thread so it shows you where to come up from the bottom and then where to go down again towards the bottom with your thread. So basically you're doing, in this case, it's mostly half, basically half stitches, only not over two or over one, but over four or over six or over five. And um, it gives you always an instruction of how to do every stitch. It has a stitch diagram with numbers showing uh, come up at one, go down in two, come up at three, go down in four, etc. So it does give you clear instructions. I think everybody should be able to work it out. If you, if you, get, if you get into a panic, just put it down. Take a minute, read the instructions again and try again because it basically... Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically half stitches for the most part. Uh, there are more complicated ones for canvas work, but for so far I've only had to deal with half stitches. And it, is, it does require a lot of different types of um, threads. So this is what I have left over. So again, I must be a very frugal stitcher or something, but yeah. 
So this is, these are uh, water colors. They are by Karen, the same as the water lilies that uh, a lot of like Mirabilia or Chatelaine patterns ask for. So the same colorways, but they come in a very thick uh, strand, which is actually comprised of, I'm trying to get them to, can you see that it's, it's a thick strand, but there's actually three separate strands in there and like a DMC that you have six strands in a skein this one has three and you stitch with one of the three um, other things pearl cottons are the same these are DMC pearl cottons and they are just a thicker as you can maybe see they are a thicker strand and you just use the one strand like that when it comes off the skein then we have bling this is a uh, gold rush by rainbow gallery it's not it's it's a thicker thread it's thicker than the petite treasure braid it's like uh, like this so that it's it is it's, it's, it's it has the same suppleness that the petite treasure braid had but it's just different thickness and it's more like a flat ribbon um, that's basically all the different types of thread that they use in this case and because uh, they are thicker threads you use um, usually stitch over more than two holes because if you have to do over one or two holes with a thick, thick thread it becomes a big mess but the positive side of that is that you can stitch it up pretty quickly. I basically stitched this in, I think, maybe a week or a week and a half. Not sure. But yeah, and I found uh, that so-and-so in the UK sells canvas in different point counts. So my point count that I currently use is 18. So 18 holes per inch. So it's basically like an 18 count uh, Ada, but then it's a plastic canvas, so it's, it's basically like a, a mesh. Basically, it's a mesh, and the holes are pretty big. I used a 22 or 24 count needle. Um, what else can I say about it? Oh, yeah, you usually start your thread with a waist knot. Um, I will try and find a tutorial for that if you need help with that but yeah basically you make a knot in the end of your um, thread you go from the top to the bottom through your canvas somewhere along the side and then go towards where your starting point is and start stitching and usually the thread that's been trailing on the back will be sort of caught by other stitches and then you can cut off the knot and the thread will be secure behind in the back so, now finally, <laughs> my finish. Da, 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 da. There it is, folks, and it's picking up the shine. Um, one thing you have to be concerned about when you're doing canvas work is that you have to follow the direction of the stitches that the stitch diagrams tell you to. If you do that, it will give you a nice effect of shine which is contradicting uh, both sides. So this, this side will be lighter and this side will be a bit darker because of the way the threads are laying. It will catch the light differently. And I really do like that effect. And if you don't watch out for that, it might become a bit of a mess. So that's something to take into account. But yeah, love it. Here's my back. So pretty decent. The back usually, because you're, you're, you're sort of going uh, from front to back and doing the same stitches on the back as on the front looks very similar but a bit more messy because I also trailed on the back but yeah what I do is I mark my top with a little arrow so I know that I'm stitching in the right direction and what I did is I used a trick that Arlene uh, explains in her tutorials with the canvas work designs that she makes uh, I sewed on 
uh, with my sewing machine, I sewed on pieces of fabric to the sides. And then I just used a Q-snap and I clipped the fabric into the Q-snap and that secured my canvas. Because the other way you can do it is have um, those wooden stretcher bars, but I, I can't buy them here and I only have small ones. So I, I figured I would try, I, I at first I thought I would just combine all the small ones into a bigger thing. And then I just thought that's silly. Why don't I take five minutes to sew on some uh, uh, fabric and just use my Q-snaps and that works fine. Um, yeah, don't know what else I can explain about this. If there's still any questions, let me know. Um, if you feel like you want to try it out, go to Arlene's website. Oh, here you can see a bit of the dark and light effect. You see that these two are darker and these two are lighter. That's because of the stitch direction of the threads and how they lay. Oh yeah, that's one other thing. Um, and I'm going to have to cut and paste because I'm going to have to find my laying tool. So I had been talking to my LNS owner about a laying tool and see, she suggested that I try uh, something that she uses. And that is... I don't know if you can see this. It's a really long, thick needle and they use this for, I think, Japanese or Chinese embroidery, not sure. But yeah, she, she just gave me one to try out and I used the head, which is about the size of a 22, 22 tapestry needle, but it's a lot longer. So I just hold it like this and then I can lay the threads over them and then um, it works pretty well, I think. So I'm going to keep my eye out for a laying tool that I like, but um, what I've come to learn from other people is that you have to hold it in your hands and try it out and see if it, it, it's the right fit for you. So I can't go around ordering all kinds of laying tools from the internet because that would be very expensive and they might not be the right size for me. So yeah, um, whenever I go to another retreat, I will have to find a shop that sells some and have, have a look at them. So that's all the finishes. Not bad, right? And then, uh, works in progress and I have a new start to, I think, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's start with the whips that you've already seen. I worked a bit on my chatelaine. And some of you have discovered that I'm on Facebook now. <laughs> because I was stuck and I finally got a chance to go on Facebook, make an account and go to uh, join the Chatelaine support group, which was very helpful because I saw some pictures of other people and how they figured out how to handle my issue. And I'm trying to find the picture. Gosh, what a mess. Yeah, so I'm working on the Rajasthan Lotus Pond and I was stuck on the inside of this border this border I've already stitched and the elephants and the lotus I've stitched. But there were uh, roads stitches on the, out, on the inside of that border and I couldn't figure out which thread to use for that. So I looked, looked at other people's pictures and basically I, I noticed that they all didn't know. <laughs> because they all use different colors and I decided to use one of the colors that I don't think I will be needing a lot of. And that kind of works for me. It's really hard to see because it's a very, very, very light yellowish green. But it's over here. Um, and it is, what is it? Honeydew. I think it's a, a water lily. Honeydew. So that's what I used and there's where I'm at at the moment. So basically I, I, I filled in more of this border. I did all the this and I, I added back stitching with metallics 
on the arches and on this whole box. And I started working on the dome in the center. I d debated if I was going to bead because there are supposed to be beads between the road stitches and on the underside and on the elephants too. Uh, but I decided against it because I am working on a scroll frame as you can see. And I want to keep the same tension for my stitching. So I will just finish all the stitching first and then go back and do the beading and um, that will be the next adventure. But yeah, so I'm on Facebook. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a minute. Well, I'll clean this away. I hope to clean this away. Um, so yeah, the main reason that I'm on Facebook is because I wanted to join the Chatelaine group and to see if I could connect with some stitchers on that platform as well. I am I'm not at all active on Facebook. Um, so I was surprised to find that people are finding me out. <laughs> uh, and that's basically because I befriended one of the Dutch stitchers just... To, oh, sorry about that. I befriended uh, on Facebook one of the stitchers that I, I, uh, that I consider a good friend. And the, apparently then it, Facebook recommends you to their friends. So... It, the cat was out of the bag, so sort of, yeah, I don't know how else to say it, but yeah. So if, um, I also found out that I get friend requests from people that I don't recognize. I'm not accepting those. Don't feel bad about that if it's you, because I just don't recognize, uh, it could be your, your own name and I only know you as, uh, on a different name on Instagram or on FlossTube. And I, 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 I can't put two and two together based on the pictures you show on your Facebook page compared to what you show on other pages. So don't feel bad. Also, you're not missing out because I am not posting anything. <laughs> I, am just, I am just slowly trying to figure out how Facebook works. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all. Um, it's Facebook. I'm trying to be cautious. Um, and then I worked on... Oh yeah. I worked on Salem. Because Dark October stitching is something I never get to do. As I said before, we don't have Halloween. Or I don't have Halloween. Uh, so, but I did have a start on my Salem uh, sort of souvenir remembrance piece because my visit uh, this year and it is uh, as as i tried to explain before i combined several charts for this so one of the charts i combined was this by uh, richie stitchy on etsy i will link them below and the other one that i combined was this which is of Salem by uh, the Primitive Hair. I will link them below. And the last one that I've not yet started, but is I can't show you because it's only the pattern. But it's by oh I can show you Echoes of Innocence. So I have been fiddling and cutting and pasting and making my own composition with elements of these three designs. And here is where I am so far. I'm picking my own colors as I go. And I didn't think about what... It is an x design fabric, which is showing up pretty clearly. So next time, remind me to do a really early in the morning video. Um, but... It is, it was a, I think it was a fabric of the month, and I think it was something like dark sand it's basically a bit of um, gray with tan tones so yeah um, as you can see I've finished my work on uh, the witchy stitchy bit and now I'm working on the list of names but I have uh, placed them in a different order because I wanted them to be in order of dates so I've also added the dates to it. But yeah, here's where I'm at. And I stopped here because I was kind of 
getting depressed <laughs> with stitching such a long list of names and yeah there were things going on that, that didn't make me want to stitch this anymore but yeah i will get back to it but dark october stitching is sort of kind of done for a bit for me um, so more mess um, if you're wondering about the colors, by the way, I used uh, Onyx from, I think it's Weeks Dye Works. Yeah, Weeks Dye Works Onyx for the tombstone, mostly. And uh, I have several skeins of Onyx and some of them have a brown, blackish look and others have a green, blackish look. And I, I use the green variant. And then for the names, I'm using Brick. Brick path, brick road, something with bricks, trying to find it, where is it, uh, hang on, oh here, brick path, 7086 by Gentle Arts. And it has a uh, like a tan rusty red color, and I thought it was nice because it kind of looks like splatters of blood are on the names. Thought it was appropriate. So yeah, that's it. And then. Uh, More works in progress. Trying to keep everything together. Oh, it's brown sand. 40 count Newcastle by XU Designs is the fabric I'm using for this. What's this? It's gonna... And here's my stuck together copy paste thing. Okay. Then. Let's see, this is also one you've seen before. I'm not sure if I showed you this last time because I'm I didn't know when <laughs> was the last time I actually showed you anything. But yeah, I was I, I worked a bit more on praise of the needle. I think I might have showed you this last time, so I don't know. Again, this is an FCU design fabric. Light peacock, I think it is. And again, this is where I'm at. I am working on this last bit of border and I'm working on the lettering. And I'm trying to make use of the good light that we have today. Yep. Over one stitching is becoming one of my favorite things at the moment. I have a lot of over one stitching going on. Which is sometimes annoying, but mostly wonderful. I love the tiny stitches. So that's that. And then... Of course, I did some long dog alonging. This is a, a stitch along that um, Stephanie at Lindy Stitches started. And... Um, basically, if you're working on a long dog sampler, feel free to join. And uh, this is what I'm, I've picked out, Rain Dance. This is all the DMC that's needed for it. And I am stitching this on, I think it's a 28 count vintage Dune Swigart. It's lightly mottled with a tannish mottling. And this is where I got so far. Don't you just love this? I mean, I just love this. Absolutely. I'm going to make this my screenshot, hopefully. Oh my god, I love that bird. And there's been some theories about what these things are. And I am leaning towards that they're probably some kind of feathers or something. Not horns. <laughs> <laughs> as I thought. Also, let me know what you think these are because I have been debating about it. They could be like little atomic clouds, which I'm guessing they're not. 
um, these four ex external thingies, extremities, look like maybe they could be legs. So it might be some kind of platypus that's been highly stylized, but that doesn't make sense because platypus, I think, are only in Oceania, right? But yeah. Loving it. Over one. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. And it helps that I don't use variegated threads in this because otherwise I won't be have to having to stitch one stitch at a time. Now I can just do a row. So I may, I'm using a lot of continental 10 stitch for that to stop the uh, stitches from slipping. Um, what else to say about this? Nothing. All oh, my needles are still in there. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my final whip. I started something because I was sick of dark October, so I opted for pretty October instead. This is Autumn Box by the Victoria Sampler. I got this at a sale by so and so, I think last year. And I got the embellishment pack too for a nice price. And I decided to start working on it. And this is how far I got. I'm working on the top. So basically you sew this lid, you sew the, the top and the sides and then you stick them together and then the box is also something you have to make yourself. And the instructions are all in this booklet. So I started on the top and I made some mistakes but I don't care, you can't tell. And on the top here I've added a row of ribbon stitching to represent the leaves. You use three different types of ribbon for that. They all, they all come in the kit. And the bottom row you can still see the branch that I just cross stitched. And over that will, I will stitch in the ribbon stitches. And let me tell you something. Ribbon stitching, it looks really scary. It's the easiest thing I've ever done. Hands down. It's okay if you make an error because I made some errors where you can see the leaves are just... I, I pulled too tight like... Um, like over here, the red ones. Oh, mm -hmm. Some of the red ones are too, too slender. And that's when I pull too tight. But you can go back and go over them and make another leaf. And then it's really fun, actually. And I really like the look of it. So I'm going to go and work on this some more this weekend. This is my weekend small, basically. But yeah, love this. I don't think I've, I've actually shown this on Instagram yet, but yeah, you get the premiere. Uh, so that's all the stitching. And yeah, it's gonna be a long one because <laughs> I did some stashing. And I went uh, on my trip. And yes, are you? Camera angles, weirdness. Okay. Um, so I went to England. And it was a bit of the... I don't know the, the English name for it, but we have this story about... Ten little kids and every, one, every time one drops off. That was basically the story <laughs> of my trip to Cambridge. Because several people had, had mentioned to me that they were going to meet up with me there. And in the end it was only Emma. I think Emma might have done some sabotaging. I don't know. Anyway. Um, for all of the Judys and the Sarah and the Tinas. And the, I think that's all the names. I am so sorry we didn't get to meet up. We will try again, definitely, because I had a really, really good time. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> um, basically, we spent uh, the Saturday in Cambridge and walked around a lot <laughs> because 
am I can't read maps. Just saying. Just putting it out there. Um, and But it was really fun. And we saw a lot of the city. And uh, we of course went to the Fitzwilliam Museum. I think by now the uh, exhibit has been closed. But oh my gosh. That's a, that's a really nice museum, first of all. And secondly, they have an amazing sample collection. It was in a really tiny room, but what they had on, on display was amazing. And Michelle, before you ask, I did not see your Elizabeth Wade. It was not on display. I'm really, really bummed about that. Uh, that's not a good expression to use in the UK, but yeah, you're American, so... Um, yeah, it was amazing. We had a great time. We missed all the people who were, who were planning to go as well, but we managed to have a good time anyway. Um, so on Sunday, I departed for a day in London and Emma departed to get home because long trips on trains. So that was sad, but London was fun. I, I've been to London a couple of times, so I didn't do the normal normal touristy things, but I went to the Victoria and Albert Museum and that's another ex excellent museum. Definitely, definitely go there if you have a chance. They had a good display of uh, textiles in different settings. And they had like a Middle East and Oriental section with beautiful tapestries and wall hangings and clothing, embroidered clothing and loved every bit of that. Um, and there was a display and I think it was a part of a fashion display where they have like fashion through the ages. That was really interesting as well and beautiful everything else basically they have a have a really good selection there and then after the Victoria and Albert Museum I went to the Tower of London I was already getting close to the end of the day so I just walked around there for a bit I did go in I was really busy there saw the Tower Bridge and then I figured I would get home with the train and then there was some underground issues, so that took a bit longer than expected. But yeah, I made it back to Cambridge, fine. And then on Monday I had another full day, almost full day of being in Cambridge. And I went uh, for a walk because again it was a beautiful day. It was really, really nice and warm weather. I think it was 25 degrees, something like that. And um, I walked around the town a bit more. And I walked uh, made basically along the different colleges of the Cambridge University. It's divided into uh, colleges which have been uh, formed in from, from like the Middle Ages on towards 1500, something like that, by different kings or noblemen. And so you have uh, Trinity College, which is founded by, I think, Henry VIII. And you have King's College, which was founded by, I don't know, which Henry the Seventh or the whatever. And you have Queen's College and all that. They all have separate buildings and you can go in there. And some of them charge you to have a look and some of you don't, but some of them don't. But I went into some of the colleges and that was really interesting. And I will add uh, some pictures at the end of the video for you to have a look at because I didn't have a Dutch fact ready as usual. Uh, so yeah, that was just great. Really had a lovely time. I can definitely recommend doing that. Um, Cambridge is about an hour, an hour and a half by train from London. Definitely worth combining the two. Uh, trains were interesting in the sense that I am used to just going to the train station, buying a ticket and the price is always the same. Well, you have, I have a card for discount uh, outside of the, uh, the busy hours, but in England trains are definitely something you have to book in advance because it will save you an enormous amount of money. <laughs> just 
to let you know. Uh, so, I bought the catalogue at the museum. That's, oh my gosh, just... Huh? Just, oh my gosh. It's really, really, really good catalogue. I've been looking into it because I... Oh my god, the white work was so pretty. I've been looking into it uh, because I noticed uh, where it said where the sampler was from. That there were two basically big collections that were donated to the Fitzwilliam Museum by collectors. And they were the main part of, the, uh, of their exhibit. So I looked into some of them and uh, one of the guys that was a collector, I forgot his name now, but I did, I did Google him and, and read a bit more about them. Yeah, very interesting character. He, was one of, he, he worked at Cambridge and he had a collection of, of China as well. And samplers and I'm not sure what else he collected, but basically he was a hoarder. <laughs> And in a good sense, because, oh my gosh, he did, he made some good choices there. Anyway, um, I'm not sure I'm going to insert pictures, because I think officially you weren't allowed to take pictures, but I took some for myself. But I know that on Instagram, uh, Tash has... Uh, shown a lot of pictures so go find her post <coughs> so other things christmas ornament 2018 just cross stitch i purchased it uh, because from the i always look at the front and see if there's enough there that interests me and there was and as you can see i've already marked some that I want to stitch. So let me see if I can show you some that are not on the cover. <coughs> yeah, I thought this one was really nice. This is by Elizabeth Needlework. That's on the cover. That's, on the, that's not on the cover. And this is by, <coughs> excuse me, Blue Ribbon Designs. This is fun. I thought this was interesting to try out as a, as a drum. Since I'm now the expert at making stand-ups, I'm sure I can make a drum, right? Uh, and Nicole. You're gonna like this one. This is by MTV Designs. Thought that was cute. There's a lot in there, I think. But yeah. Uh, like this one too. Uh, Snowflake Stitchery. Sarah Richards. Is that? No, not stitching mommy. But this was cute. This is by, again, Elizabeth Needlework Designs. This is a button. I like that. I like the wreath. I'm just, just randomly going through this. This is by Nikki's Creations, which I thought was very cute. I like to finish with the lacing. This I liked, but I'm not going to stitch the words, but I do like the look of the flowers. This is by My Big Toe, of course. Oh, um, now, some enabling. Minnie Gray showed her wall of beautiful finishes. We 
which made me go to pull stitches and purchase this Joan Elliott. I never stitched a Joan Elliott before, but this I want to stitch. Yeah. Go look at Minnie's video because this doesn't do it justice at all. It's just, I love it. Then, some things that have been on my wish list in forever. Serbian proverb. It says, be humble for you are made of earth. Be noble for you are made of stars. I love that. You've seen it, Farm Girl Stitches did it. I think Lisa, you also did it, Kindred Stitcher. I'm sure there's more. Jen, I think, I think I saw this with you for the first time because you did the colored version, I think. And I never noticed that and I love it. So I might do the colored version. I don't have the time to stitch all these things. But wait, there's more. That last uh, shipment came from a German online shop, which I was trying out. Which I'm sort of okay with, except for that it took forever because there was one pattern that I also ordered that they fi finally figured out they couldn't get. So after three weeks, they finally let me know they couldn't get that anymore. So. But then it arrived in, in another day, so... But yeah, they also sent me this. Riolis catalog. And of course, I thought I would show you some of the things that are in here. Because, oh my gosh, look at that. It's a Spanish lace cushion or panel. And it's coming soon, so it's not out yet. But I thought I would show you anyway. Oh my gosh, look at that. I've seen this one in a different setting before though, so that's interesting. I think it's uh, also a Lenart or... not sure. This has been on my wish list in forever, but I'm still not sure. I think Tash, you, you've stitched this, right? Do you like it? Let me know. Because I'm not sure. I'm on the fence about that one. Then... I do like this one. Sorry for all the... they all get in the way, but this is... Interesting. This one is going out of print, so if you want it, get it. Because that's what they show here with the bell. It says it's going out of... It's one more season. Excuse me. And then it's going out of print. So that's handy to know. Also, everything on this. <laughs> I don't know why I'm a sucker for any geishas or fish or peonies or... And these, I love these. Don't you think these are cool? It's like a Art Nouveau glass. Uh, how do you call those? Stained glass. Love those. And there's lots more in there that I'm not going to show you. If you, I think you can uh, look at Riola's uh, webpage and and, and and get the catalog from them, or just look at the webpage. I don't know. I got it with my shipping. Um, and then we had a marvelous event in that Michelle Bendy Stitchy did an online auction. And then a, an Instagram auction. And I got some things. Jeanette Douglas. Love this. My stitching treasures. Love it. Uh, might have to figure out. If I can figure out how to do that autumn box, I might turn this into a box of my own. Not the wooden box, but... And Kingsland. I've never heard of Kingsland, but oh my god, I love this. I love this. 
That's my newspaper, if you hear that. It's called Ancestral Wedding Samplers, booklet number 12, Kingsland. It's 1992 copyright, so it might be hard to find. I love, love, love the border on this one. This is number 20, Tudor Pinks. Oh my God, that border. And the pattern is interesting because the pattern basically is just this and then this. And then they say, well, if you want more, just turn the pattern over and you can do this one. Turn the pattern over and you can do this side, etc. So you can also add in more of these to make it wider or taller, which I thought was genius. They knew what they were doing in 19 something, 94. And then I succumb to some more needle, uh, so needlepoint canvas work. Because Laura J. Perrin is genius. I mean, just look at that. That's just everything. This is Indian Summer American Gold Collection by Laura J. Perrin. She also still sells online. Yeah, I need to get off the internet, boys, because oh my gosh. The advantage is it stitches up really quickly. <laughs> this one, I summer days, I did not love the, love the color at all. I think that is just too bright yellow for me. But if I, if you look at the model, you can see what the pattern is like, and this could easily be uh, turned into more of a Christmassy color range or an autumny color range or just like a pastelly spring. Anything but all the yellow. So I did purchase this one as well. So thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you everyone who joined in the fun and who supported or donated in any form. Loved it. I am so impressed by the amount of money that Michelle raised. That's amazing. One last thing. Uh, I watched Suzette, Primitive Stitcher, a long time, a long time ago, a couple of months ago, I think last autumn. She did a tutorial on how to stain with walnuts. Now I need to talk to my dad because he actually has a walnut tree, so I need to find, get my hands on some of those husks to try it out. But I also finally found an Etsy store in the UK that sells walnut crystals like this. I've actually since then found another place in the Netherlands that sells them in, in smaller packages as well. But yeah, I, I got some walnut crystals and I'm gonna do some experimenting someday because science. My pile is gone. And oh my gosh, it's almost an hour and I'm going to add in photos. Every time I forget to say this, but now I remember it. So uh, thank you to Beverly, uh, Palette PC. I, I, I'm not sure if you go by Beverly or Bev, but yeah. Thank you because you put me on to, or you convinced me to get the game. Oh my gosh, I didn't play in such a long time, I keep forgetting the name. And I'm totally blanking out. Oh, One Man's Sky, One Man's Sky. Yeah, it's a, well, I use it as a PC game. Uh, I got it from Steam when it was on sale. Decent price, I think, for what you get out of it. I'm really enjoying it, but I haven't played in a long time because I've just been too busy and uh, I've put stitching over anything else. To do in my spare time uh, so yeah if you're a gamer go check it out you probably heard of it because I was a bit of a a thing when it came out first time <laughs> but this is a, a, a new edition and it's really I really enjoy playing it and I need to get back on there but I haven't had time but just want to say I, if I if I if I manage it I will insert a picture of my avatar or something that I made a picture of in the game. I'm not sure if I have saved any. But yeah, love it. Uh, I think I'm, I'm looking around to see if there's anything here that I have forgot to include, but I don't think so. So 
I'm going to add in some pictures at the end here from Cambridge and London. And I am going to say, I think I will be back in two weeks, but I'm also thinking about doing a rotation of every three weeks because every two weeks is kind of a lot at the moment because it takes an hour to get everything sorted it takes an hour to film it takes an hour to upload it takes an hour to add now half an hour to edit etc so it basically takes me uh, most of the day to do things and when i'm busy that means that if I do it, my house won't get cleaned or my clothes won't get cleaned or I won't do any shopping or like that. That's not the way an adult is supposed to live, I'm told. So um, I'm aiming for two weeks. Let's, let's say that. <laughs> um, yes, I'm sure you understand. Anyway, um, now it's the time of the video that I'm starting to babble, so it's time to say goodbye. I hope you are all doing well. As always, I know people are struggling out there. You know I'm thinking of you, whether it's struggles with work or with your mental health or your physical health or your love life or whatever, your loss. You know I'm there and I'm thinking of you and uh, I hope to see you again in two weeks, maybe three. Bye guys.